Before we get into the video, I just want to say you can catch me on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash GareBearYT. I also want to mention that this is a little bit older footage from over the summer, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it anyways, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Hey guys, how's it going? I'm excited today because I'm going to be making some content that I haven't actually made before. Today I'm going to be making uh, IRL videos, you can already see. I'm going to be editing it together, probably adding a bit of music, um, making it look cool, getting some uh, nature shots in there, that kind of stuff. And I'm actually going to be making a uh, fishing video today, is what I'm going to be doing. So hopefully you guys enjoy. Um, Later this fall, I'm going to be doing some hunting, so I hope to get some hunting content out for you guys as well on my channel. Um, just broaden my horizon, get my content out there to more people, get more people coming in, that kind of thing, instead of just playing video games about this stuff I'm actually going to do in real life now. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy. Um, first thing I figured I'd start off doing is actually showing you my tackle box, since it's my arsenal of sorts that I will be working with. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you guys that, and then we'll get right to the video. All right, so I got my camera set up on my chest rig now. Both my hands are free and good to go. So I'm gonna be showing you the main stuff that's in my tackle box. As you can see up here, it's just kind of whatever I put there. It's not it, it's not organized at all. Down here is just a huge mess. I know what's in there, but it is quite a mess. So I'm gonna start up at the top. Here I just have a wrapper for pickle rig. I didn't want to throw out on the shore. I got a float. I got some other stuff up there. Just one of these little uh, uh, minnow type deals here that's not really um stuff i'm going to use down here in the second row we're starting to get into more of the go-to stuff um we've got some hard baits here basically we have um baits like these if i can get it out here which have the two trebles on the body the two treble hooks they have a rattle inside and then the nose here actually determines how far they're going to be diving into the water so this one's a fairly deep diver um and I have some that go shorter, some that go longer. This one is actually what they call a popper. Basically the front end is kind of hollowed out like this. And what that does is it'll go across the water in this kind of fashion with the right rod movement from you. Next up is kind of just a solid body um, shad, I believe they're called. It's got a rattle inside. Again, the two treble hooks place up here for your leader or line to attach to. Very simple stuff. I don't actually use these a whole lot. Um, I just went into my local Cabela's and they were selling them for $1.99 a piece. So I figured, how can you go wrong with it? This one is really cool. It's got a rattle still, the two trebles. But with the nose, it'll only dive um, two to four feet deep in the water. So it's actually pretty cool. And you can see it's got some like glitters on it there too. Um, and then I only have... Uh, one small spoon. I don't use spoons a whole lot. I haven't really ever had luck with them, so I kind of stay clear of them. I'll try to get it into the light here for you, but it is it is a decently sized spoon, and it's a decent color too, so if I have to use that, I will. Uh, I got a lot of soft baits, as you can see here, and I got some other stuff down there. Um, I got different sized hooks, so I can go from something big like this, which compared to my finger is, you know, decently sized here. Or I can go down to something small like this. Um, this hook, I believe, is a 1 16th ounce. And then this hook here is a quarter ounce. So there is quite a difference in the size. Um, I have some other color variations and I have some sizes in between. I believe this one here is an eighth ounce, and this one's another quarter. Um, so yeah, just different colors for different situations. If I want to switch it up, I can. Some of the soft body baits I have are basically these um, uh, artificial minnows. These are two inch, I believe. And then I have the more flashier, but smaller uh, one inch. Um, down here, I got some grubs. There's a few different kinds. I have these green and bright yellow ones, which have the tails kind of flapping around like this a lot more. I have the um, orange and yellowish ones, which are kind of more your traditional artificial grub, just the one tail there. And then I have some straight orange ones that uh, kind of look like a crawfish or a f small frog, maybe, um, that have the two tails here. And then I just have some of the uh, regular default white ones as well. A big problem with the water where I fish is it's very murky. So 
Um, I have to have stuff that's going to be able to go through that. That's why there's all these bright colors, stuff with rattles, stuff like that. Because obviously if the fish can't see or smell um, your bait or lure, it's not going to bite. Um, probably what I will be using here today though is this. Um, it's a pickerel rig. If you're not sure what that is, basically um, this end hooks onto your line and then it comes out like this. And there's two hooks attached to little uh, spacer type things like this. And then you just put um, sinkers on the bottom and you kind of just put minnows on the hooks, which I'll be doing. I have two cases of minnows. You put um, sinkers, you let this sit on the bottom. It keeps your bait on the bottom. And uh, it's an extremely good way to catch fish, especially in the springtime around where I am. I have my uh, um, stringer. If I actually want to keep any of the fish, I'm pretty sure I'll just be doing catch and release today. Um, down here in the bottom, I'll just move the camera here slightly, I have some more weights, I have readers, all that kind of stuff in there. I have this Berkley uh, Powerbait Walleye Attractant, which I've used, and it doesn't seem to help out a whole ton. I have just a uh, knife sharpener, I have a fillet knife in there, I have more of these uh, sinkers here, the bulb kind, not the penchons. These are mainly useful for uh, jigging because you can put these right on your leader. They don't have to attach because if you look at these, they have a little loop on the bottom or on the top, sorry, right there. And that's how they attach. These ones are just press-ons. So you can put them basically anywhere on your line, get the depth you want. Um, I have multiple um, backup pickerel rigs in case I lose these. And I just got some extra leaders here. Um, it's actually an empty package. <laughs> Let me find one that has some in it. Leaders right here. They're very hard to see, except at the ends here. So, And then I just have a few um, bobbers to go along with it. I have a few different kinds, like the red and white one there. And then this one here. Um, and I also have a guidebook down there. But that's um, that's pretty much all I got. So now I've shown you guys that, I'm going to go ahead and I think I'm going to get into the actual fishing. So I'm going to be heading down there on my bike. It's only about maybe a 10 minute ride for me. So I'm going to head down there, uh, start getting set up, and let's see how it goes.
As they so often do, the first fishing spot didn't quite work out, so a few days later I tried a different spot. The camera's going to pick up here for what will be the only catch, sadly, of this video. I caught a lot more fish over the summer, I just was not fortunate enough to actually have the cameras rolling at the points I did, and some of the days I didn't actually have my harness with me, so I couldn't set up the cameras uh, for when I was out fishing, but at least we got one for the video. small fish. As soon as I caught and started handling this fish I was able to tell that it was actually a pretty small which means that in a regular circumstance I would have just released it however I noticed that B it was also bleeding and the hook was very deep set in towards its throat stomach area so it's generally a good practice not to release a fish that's going to be severely injured and just die later in the water anyways especially if it's bleeding if there's blood loss that usually means the fish isn't going to survive too long so i figured um i wasn't really too interested in taking this little guy home and going through the work of flaying it out and stuff so i just asked the guy who was fishing there with me if he would you know if he would like the catch since he didn't get so lucky that evening he said he would take it so it all worked out in the end for both of us. I'd like to thank you guys for watching the video. And uh, let me know down below if you'd like to see more content like this in the future. It was definitely a blast to make. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy it. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.